Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to what is now the 28th edition of the Coffee Microcaps morning meeting. Oops, sorry, start at the start. Um, my name is Mark Tobin. I'm the founder of Coffee Microcaps for anybody who hasn't joined us in the past. And for all our regular uh, attendees, welcome back uh, again. Compliance and disclaimer. Um, for anybody who's joining us from the first time, just some quick housekeeping. Uh, the structure this morning's webinar is going to be over the hour. We generally run these every fortnight, although more recently we've been running them every week. Uh, each of our two companies gets a 30 minute slot, which is going to be broken down into a 20 minute presentation plus minus. And then we'll have oh, 10 minutes of Q&A, hopefully, at the end. Uh, if you do have any questions for either of our presenters this morning, please type them in the Q&A box rather than the chat function. just makes it easier and more efficient to manage the questions at the end. Uh, please note that the webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Coffee Microcaps YouTube channel tomorrow morning. So if a presenter you know, skips over a particular slide, um, a bit too quick, you will be able to go back and, and watch it tomorrow. Uh, you can follow Coffee Microcaps on Twitter. As I said, YouTube for recordings, uh, for all the recordings, including today's webinar and all our previous webinars. Uh, LinkedIn, I do some additional long form content. I also write a weekly paid subscription newsletter where I profile one interesting ASX microcap stock every week. You can find that on uh, the uh, Substack newsletter platform just putting coffee microcaps our first presenter this morning getting up nice and early joining us from part uh, we have rob graham the md and founder of scroll group and then after that we're going to have a uh, flip back to the east coast we've got mark samlal ceo and founder of pay group joining us from melbourne so without further ado i'm going to stop sharing my screen and i'm going to hand over to rob to start sharing his okay rob i can see the i can see the cover slide of your presentation now you're good to go you can see it okay great uh, thanks very much mark and good morning everybody i'm very pleased to be presenting to you today as, as mark said my name is rob graham i'm the founder and managing director of scroll and uh I, come to, I came to Scroll, I found a scroller from a, a background as a teacher and a principal. So I worked at five international schools and they were in Germany, Singapore, Norway, Belgium and Hong Kong. When I returned to Australia after Hong Kong, I started, I ran a franchise for one of our competitors, um, an international schools recruitment company. But after five years, I decided I wanted to do my own thing. So I sold, I sold that to focus on my own solutions. So in international education, I have more than 25 years experience. So I do know and understand the market very, very well. I found a scroll in 2013 to solve the many problems schools were facing. The most important thing at the time was recruitment. And I really wanted to disrupt the way recruitment was done because it was very traditional, very, very old uh, schools and, and teachers would get together in hotels. Uh, they would, uh, over around the world, they would have interviews over the weekend and hopefully by the end of the weekend, the school would hire people. Um, and I felt like that was that was inefficient. I felt that was expensive and I felt there's better ways of doing it. So that's how our first product, Scroll Connect, came about, an online applicant tracking system for schools. So it was a real, it's a real disruption. It was different and, and, and difficult for schools to understand. And just a little word about schools, they are a little bit resistant to change. It's funny that they uh, be at the forefront of change, but they also don't like changing their systems and processes. So to, to actually to make it an impact on the school, you have to have something that, that they really like. And we nailed it. We, we let, had six schools in our first year, and now we are serving more than 360 schools. We have a great future ahead of us. I mean, I'm really excited about it because we've we've um, we've proven that we can do it. We've got a revenue base, but our, our next six months are truly exciting for us. COVID, in some ways, has slowed us down the last six months, but is actually providing an opportunity for us as well as we move forward. So, what I'd like to do is show you. Sorry, it's not. It's not jumping ahead. I'd like to show you a little bit about our business. So our business is very much 
about providing service software and services to schools. We are transitioning from our, our current platforms. Currently, we have two SaaS products, Connect and Cover, and we're transitioning to the full HR solutions. So we also have a training business and we're providing, we're, we're very successful at, at selling services to major blue chip mining companies. So with our, only our two SaaS products, we, are, we, we really have, have one that is, that is international school spacing and that's called Connect. We have um, grown from $1.4 million revenue in 2017 when we listed to over $6 million in the 12 months to the 2020, December 2020. And we are now positioning ourselves to, to scale grow globally. We are tra transitioning to a full HR solution. So these are the reasons why I'm really excited. Um, there are six reasons why I'm excited about uh, our outlook. The first reason is we are transitioning to a full software as a service HR product suite. So we're combining all our products into one platform and we're gonna make it easy for schools to choose from uh, all our different, our different platforms and services as well. The second reason is that we have a strong outlook with near-term catalysts. We're leaving a partnership with ISS, which has really been limiting our growth because we haven't been able to sell our products worldwide and we haven't been able to look after our clients in the way we want to. And from 1st of July, 2021, we are going to be growing our direct sales team and sell directly into our previously closed markets off Europe and South America. And we are very good at selling. And then during second half, the second half of this year, we are launching our sales program with our strategic partner and, and um, shareholder, Baria. Our third reason is we already have blue chip clients including leading international schools, global enterprise level corporates and government, state and federal. What's really exciting is that our clients have been asking us for a full HR product suite designed directly for their needs. And I'm really excited to be able to deliver it to them. The fourth reason is we have a large addressable market. I founded this business with initial target market of international schools and that business has been growing, or so those schools have been growing at 8% per year. So they grew from 2000 odd in 2000 to over 12,000 now. And they are spending around about $2 billion in human resources expenditure, but they, their fee income is $55 billion. We also have other growth options. And this is what I'm excited about is there's that our solutions don't just suit international schools, they suit all schools. So we've got other options, including the domestic schools worldwide, and this is English language schools, enterprise and government. The fifth reason is we have a strategic partners, partnership <coughs> with one of the world's leading ed tech players, Faria. And we will commence joint marketing of our products across the 11,000 school network from July, 2021. Just by way of comparison, we have th around 360 schools and $6 million of revenue. The sixth reason is that I'm really excited to be growing our global network effect through our expansion of our scroll community. We define this as all existing customers and platform use users. We have strong moment, momentum in our scroll community. Uh, just as a comparison, when we launched in 2013, by the end of the first year, we had about 10,000 users. So now we have 172,000 users and that's both customers and platform users. We have really strong momentum, the continued growth. And we believe that's a strong leading indicator of future growth potential. I'd like to talk a little bit about our products. So currently our largest revenue item is Scroll Connect, which we're selling as ISS Scroll Advantage under our partnership with ISS. We will revert to Scroll Connect in, in 2017 and we, can't, we, we couldn't be happier about, about that. This is so in, in, from the 1st of July, we revert to Scroll Connect. We have been developed, spending the last uh, 12 months developing our version three of that, of that product which has got some, uh, some features that no other platform has got and we think will be a bit of a game changer. And these include calendar integration so people can do interview scheduling and also uh, DocuSign document into integration. So very excited, we'll be launching that in July. So that, and from then we will no longer have to share any of the revenue on new sales with ISS. So this is everything we've been doing is positioning ourselves for that. So Scroll Connect is in the market live and is poised for growth. 
In addition, we have Scroll Verify, which currently is uh, is really available for on, on automated for, for candidates. We're going to develop that so schools can order it online. Background checks for international schools are really critical because you don't know who you're hiring. And so we see that as a, as a growth potential for us. Scroll and Engage is probably the module that I'm, I'm the newest module and the one I'm most excited about. This is all about onboarding and contract management, visa management, and we know schools need it because they've been asking for it for years. And so our, our feedback, our, we have a lot of uh, schools who are, who are engaging with us on product development. They're really excited for us to deliver that, that module. So that's gonna be in the market later in this year. Scroll Develop is our training business. Now that's been going for, for more than 20 years and very well regarded in Western Australia, providing services to all our blue chip clients. And so BHP, Rio Tinto, and uh, FMG, Border Force, we, we have many clients in, in Western Australia. We are the sole provider of, of what we call the OJT program to Rio Tinto in Western Australia. Uh, we are always on their side or they come to our offices or, or we go to their offices in Perth. So that, that is, a, is a cornerstone of Scroll Develop. It's very well regarded, but we're also looking to expand that into international schools. And our, our first contract, uh, our first big contract was with Ho Chi Minh City, IS Ho Chi Minh City, which was over $100,000 for a product. So that's very exciting. It just also shows how quickly we can expand our products. And Scroll Cover is our Relief Teacher app. And it, and it, and it can be used, it's currently is used mostly in schools, but we've also got that in hospitals. And that is all about using a, an app to reach out to your pre-selected uh, groups and what has happened is it's changed that, that uh, process from hours of, of teachers on the phone to minutes. So schools love that. We have really high renewal rates for it. So it's really, so, so what's really exciting for us is we, we, are, we are growing our business from this, our two products or three products. So two SaaS products, Connect and Cover uh, to, and Develop and to having everything on one platform. All of our five products will be on, on one platform. Teachers will be able to order and take part in, in professional development throughout through, through the platform. Schools will be able to do the same. They, everyone will have a dashboard and all our products will be on the same dashboard. We are really excited because this is a full HR suite. And we also know uh, from our research that there is no comparable, comparable competitor who does this for international schools or for the education market. So we're very excited about that. This is moving down to our, our school groups or our, our blue chip clients. These schools uh, that I've, I've listed are probably amongst the, are recognized as much the best in the world, Beijing, Brussels and Bangkok. The school networks have got, uh, we've, we've got clients in every one of those school networks and also the enterprise level clients that I talked about before. So that is pretty exciting for us. Uh, that's, uh, there's room for us to grow. Obviously there's, there's 12,000 schools. We've got a long way to go. So for us, you know, our initial client markets has all been about the addressable market in international schools. That's a large addressable market. With schools growing at 8% per year, we could play in that market and, and stay in it and stay and grow. We, and we've also got Faria's 3,000 schools. So currently they've got 11,000 schools. They have 3,000 schools in international schools. And we have 10% of that, of their market. So we've got a, a, a way to go by tapping into their market, but also into all the other markets. And, and I'll explain to you a little bit later about how we're going to go and do that. So we have that organic growth of international schools, but more importantly, our target markets increase with our product range expansion to now include the 180,000 domestic schools and enterprise and government. So we have an immediate opportunity to increase revenue from international schools by targeting our cross-sell to far as existing clients and upselling all our products to our existing clients. And so our clients only really pay for Connect. And we already have proven that we can do that. Uh, we can increase the contract value per school. So within terms of our revenues, so we've already got a strong revenue base and we are positioning ourselves to scale. 
We experienced some, strong, some interruptions from COVID-19, but we have leveraged to COVID-19 recovery. And I think COVID is actually going to help us in the future because people aren't going to return to face-to-face -to -face recruitment fairs. They're going to look for online solutions. So we are going to provide opportunities for schools in the future to be able to engage with our platform and engage with teachers through an events module. And we know that we can, that we can, we can grab market share from that. So we've grown revenue year on year since we listed from 1.4 million to 6.1 last year, 2020. So we're looking forward to, uh, we're looking forward to this year because we think this year is, is a pivotal year for us to really scale. So 2019, we made 5.7 in revenue, just, and just to, as, a, as a point in COVID year, we increased our revenue to 6.1. But most importantly, we've had growth momentum in December quarter 2020 with rising ARR. What we need to look forward to in the near term is our margin expansion. So we've uh, renegotiated a deal last year with ISS as an exit deal. We improved our margin to 50% off the sales and you can see our gross margin is, is, is improving and that is going to improve in the future as we sell 100% off, off our products and, and keep it keep 100%. And the, we have a distribution partnership with Fire, but it's nowhere near the, the fees that uh, we pay to ISS. Our new product launches are going to show how we can increase our target contract value for schools. So we don't have to give away 50% to ISS. We're really good at selling. Historically, in our partnership with ISS, 80% of our sales came from our, our sales team. So we have great sales models and a very and this new partnership will help us grow our business. So what we're looking to do is expand our contract value for schools. From currently, it is our share is five thousand Australian dollars. We want to increase that to thirty thousand dollars, and we can do that. So, this year we have a pretty busy and hectic schedule of getting of product releases. Our team have been working really hard at all these products. So currently, all these products are live, except for Engage, in one way or another. But they're not. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not integrated and these will be. So Scroll Connect is obviously our first module that we, that we will release. We will release, currently we have version two in market and that has been sold as ISS Scroll Advantage. In July, we'll be launching Scroll Connect 3.0, which has significant differences to our current Advantage platform. We have done no work on Advantage in the last 12 months. We've done all the work on Connect and that is now in user testing and to, give, to be ready to be released in July 2021. So we will also be launching Cover. Uh, we won't be doing a, a lot to that platform because it can be sold and it's, it's sold in Australia, so that's ready to go. Verify is the schools, uh, the schools integration, which we'll be automating ordering. That's going to that's going to be great. We've got a lot of orders that we we process for schools already, but it's more manual. We also have the idea that develop selling and develop overseas is a great opportunity. And we know that's true because we, we've sold to two schools. We only just started uh, launching our marketing campaigns around that. And it's already making a difference and people are interested. Uh, what our school in Ho Chi Minh did is they invited a couple of their sister schools that are a Cognita school. And they invited a couple of their sister schools to participate. And so we have uh, two other schools who are joining in that, in that group as well, which is great for us. And then of course we have Engage which is really our, our new module, which is a, an opportunity to have revenue in, in another module very quickly. That's coming later this year. The other piece about us is that we're a two-sided marketplace. We haven't been um, talking about that very much, but there's not very many two-sided marketplaces. We have schools and we have candidates and we make revenue from them both. So that's exciting for us as well. And it's a, we're trying to build our network effects that we become the go-to HR SaaS platform for all global schools and eventually across other industries. It's a global two-sided marketplace, currently connecting educational organization and teachers. As the marketplace builds, we, as at scales, we build network effects, we build latent value and we grow our revenue potential. So then there's the scroll community this is the piece that we've that that we have been growing every every quarter since we since um since we started 
it's really interesting because we we uh, signed up at our very first six schools. We we're amongst the best schools in the world, and that and what that brought was ten thousand candidates applying for those jobs. And so, obviously, those schools couldn't hire ten thousand people, but other schools could. And that was the, that was the source of our first part of success, being able to tap into both sides of the of the of the uh, market, the two sided marketplace. But also now we are growing this community. Now now our whole school community comprises everybody who's a customer or a platform user. So if you look on the right hand side of the slide, you can see we've got close to 4,000 organizational users. That's around every, every, every school we have has about 10 users who use it. And we have 140 odd thousand candidates. The number at the top is 162,000, that's actually 174. And that has continued to grow. So all these areas, we will have engagement with, with teachers. Scroll engage will be, will be great because it will be engagement with teachers who are in a job, but who will eventually be looking for a job later on. So we'll be able to cross sell and upsell to them as well. So it's really represents future potential for us. It's future revenue growth, being able to provide products to, to teachers and schools that they want. Because once we grow our community, we can, we can capture global network effects. We can drive our cross sell and upsell, and we can increase our monetization of the full HR life cycle. Now we have some really exciting drivers, sales drivers, and we have three drivers for us. So we don't really need to rely on one individual sales driver per se, we have three of them. So the first one is the Fire Direct Strategic Partnership, another one is direct sales, and the third one is direct, is cross-sell and upsell. So I'd like to talk you through these. So sales driver number one is Fire By this second half, we will have completed our integration into Faria's uh, portal, management portal, and schools will be able to, to have a free trial and click on and automatically provision their accounts in our system. And we're going to be marketing our combined offering to all their schools. We're pretty excited about that because they have three, so targeting their initial 3,000 schools. A few things about Faria, if you don't, if you don't know about Faria, they, they, were, they were bootstrapped organization started in 2006 by two college students and now they are used by 80 percent of IB schools in the world because their managed back platform is the the platform that that all schools really have to use so they they have grown significantly and they've really well respected and being a partner with them is great for us so we're and they're also a SaaS company and so we're really excited about that so we'll go to drive ourselves through Faria we have new product launches for, with them as well, that they'll be able to go to to um, to help us sell. Now, just to indicate the revenue potential with Faria, Scroll has five point three, sorry six point one million dollars in revenue and three hundred and sixty schools. Faria has ten thousand schools, three thousand in international schools. We are really looking forward to being part of the of the Faria ecosystem and be part of their their unified experience, which is where our our, our platform will exist. Our second sales driver, and probably for me, the really exciting piece is because we have been, is our direct sales model. We are so excited to be able to grow our direct sales team, given the range of immediate opportunities for us. Currently, we have four direct sales professionals. We're gonna double that, that size. We're already in the process of growing that team. We are, our intention is to, have, is to have between six and eight salespeople targeting all our global markets trained up and ready to go from the 1st of July. That's really important for us, but also we, we intend to have in that within that team an additional four, three to four people who are working with as, as customer success agents as well. So we're, once we sell, we want to keep them. We haven't been able to do that in the past, and now, but we're really good at selling. We're really good at, at, at relationships. So we want to be able to do that from our, through our direct sales model. So just a reminder, We've always generated 80% of sales with our partner. ISS only contributed 20%. So we know that once we're unconstrained, we will be able to continue that sales growth. We've, it's, we've, it, we've got momentum, we're, we're growing, and our new products are really exciting. Our team is ready and waiting. The current team can't wait to get into, into the market. We've been constrained because we could only market to Australia, Middle East, and North, North Africa. We couldn't do, even do all of Africa. So from July 1st, we'll be able to target South America, Central America, 
Europe and also the rest of Africa. So we will be driving our sales team to for success. And we know that we are, we are going to scale and we're going to scale quickly. Now, third sales driver, which is also pretty exciting, is our cross sell and upsell potential. We've been pretty much focused on growing our business through uh, our Connect product. But now we are looking to say, we think we can increase that, that contract value. So if I can take IS Ho Chi Minh as an example, they pay just under 20,000 Australian dollars for access to Connect per year. So we were able to increase that contract value from $20,000 to $154,000 just by adding one extra module. So if you think about all our other modules we've got, we've got, we'll have cover, we have verify, and we have um, engage to come. You can see how we can increase the, the revenue per, per score. And that our target for us is from to go from that $5,000 to $30,000. We are gonna do that. We're gonna have margin expansion. So not sharing any sales with ISS. Uh, we have margin, so we've already got margin, margin upside from our renegotiated agreement with ISS. We, currently a 50% share on renewals, and that will continue next year, but after that, we're on our own. We have demonstrated we can generate more per client, and we are going to focus on that. So our sales team are not only going to sell Connect, they're also going to be talking to, to our clients about how they can, they can use our other products to their advantage. And that is expected to increase contract value. So here's a, our corporate snapshot. We really have a, a $23 million market cap with $6.1 million in revenue. We have been really been focused on our products and our customers, but we intend to increasingly get out and tell our story because as I said in the beginning, it's the most exciting time ever in our company's outlook. I'm really excited to be leading a scroll through its next growth phase. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Rob. Uh, that's great. We have a couple of questions that came in ahead of time. So I just want to quickly go through those. Um, I'm not sure if you if you notice kind of across the, the network, but you know, what's the average time that a, a teacher spends at a school? So, you know, say I'm a chemistry teacher at you know the Australian International School in Singapore. I know it because I used to live pretty close to it. And now I want to go to say IH. See Ho Chi Minh that you mentioned there, you know, how often are these teachers kind of moving around from one international experience to another? They, yeah, they, we call them teacher tourists. Uh, probably um, the, you, would, you would expect people to stay, to stay a minimum of two years. Uh, probably two to three years is the average. Um, in really good schools, they might, they might stay five, but they don't often stay longer than that. There are teachers who will stay in one place because it's fantastic, like Hong Kong. But you, there's a we we see people come back into our platform and look for jobs every two to three years. So we we have that network effect as well, where they, they continue and then they um, they find a job and then they come back to us to find the next job. Okay, great. And then the other question that we got in ahead of time was, what's the typical contract length um, for the schools? You know, do they sign every single year? You know, just before their I guess their academic year starts up. Or do they normally sign up for, you know, a, a kind of a, a three-year rolling product, or, or what's the kind of term length on the contracts? So our contracts at the moment are twelve-month contracts. Um, we have a couple of schools who are on longer-term contracts um, who've signed for three years and prepaid for three years. Uh, we, um, with our partner Faria, we've been talking about extending the contract length. Uh, we think that's a much better idea. Uh, so that's something we'll be targeting as well to increase the length of the, of the contracts because obviously that's uh, that um, means that you are going to keep your schools. So that's uh, so we're currently one year, but looking to expand that. Okay. And then just a quick question from me, because uh, I saw you mentioned South Africa there. Um, you know, I know private schools here in South Africa have been absolutely exploding over the last uh, couple of years. In terms of those domestic schools, are they going to be kind of the first targets? You know, the private schools here are, you know, uh, St. Kevin's Boys in Melbourne or a, or a Sydney Grammar. Is it those are, are the first ones you're going to be targeting? Or are you going yeah. you know, literally yeah, to got, you know, the state schools yes. in New South Wales, for example? Yeah, so for us, the, the market is definitely private schools um, around the world. That's our very first market. You know, to get into, in, into, into, into government schools is an enterprise solution, which is a 
tender process. And of course, if those came up, we would we'd be interested in those. But the the uh, people who make decisions quicker are the, are the independent schools. So uh, there's a couple of thousand in, in Australia, and obviously, as you said, in South Africa, there's those, there's those as well. And this solution that we have is is uh, those schools can use it. We can we can target the one size will definitely fit all. all. Okay, great. Rob, we're going to have to leave it there because we're actually even slightly over time. And I know Mark okay. is uh, chomping at the bit. Thank you very much for uh, getting up early and joining us from Perth. It's much appreciated. And yeah, thanks, um, thanks Mark. We'll, we'll hand over to Mark, the other Mark now. Mark, if you want to start sharing your screen, uh, I'll let you know once it's up and live. Yeah, I can see the cover slide of your screen now. Great shot of Marina Bay Sands in Singapore. Thank you, Mark. Great. Um, really appreciate to be back here again, Mark. And Rob, um, having spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars educating my children at, at a Cognita school in Singapore, um, any dollars you can get back for yourself, that's terrific to hear. So uh, good luck with your journey. Can you hear me okay, Mark? Yeah, I hear you perfect on this side, Mark. Well, shall I start then? Yep, we're ready to go. So um, thank you very much, everybody, for um, uh, joining today's presentation. I'm Mark Samlal. I am the founder of Pay Group, and uh, the reason that I found this business is because of all the investable thematics we'll talk about today. But we at Pay Group have a board and a management team that's highly aligned to the payroll industry with great expertise over 25 years. So it's terrific to be able to talk to you today as we've just exited our fiscal year. We're a March 31 balancer. So what Pay Group does is we are the leading provider of payroll and human capital management solutions across 41 countries, again, focused on the Asia Pacific area. We deliver mission critical payroll solutions and we, we give those from a position of control. So we sell typically to an international headquarters or to a regional headquarters. We've been focused on our, <clears throat> uh, on our building of scale from our IPO three years ago. And that scales are given to us uh, as a result of great client retention because of our deep regulatory and compliance expertise. Today, with our latest acquisition, we are over 2,100 enterprise companies, customers, and those customers underpin our ongoing upsell, cross-sell, our organic growth potential. We've continued to deliver fast growth on our ARR perspective, and that will be a focus for us into FY22 and beyond. And as a result of this, we're completely on top of our ability to execute on our value growth initiatives and are extremely well funded to do so. So how we do this and how our customers look at us is clearly on the right hand side of today's slide. We are a fully compliant payroll solution for up to 41 countries and today each one of those transactions, which are over 6 million, um, is an opportunity for us to further monetize. We provide also a scalable HCM module, modules to our clients. It's modular in nature, so customers can take one, two or three HCM modules, but they generally come after the implementation of the deeply trusted payroll regulatory compliance solutions. We do this in over 40 countries today, and as mentioned, 2,100 customers and growing number of markets across the region. When our customers look to acquire deep regulatory services as our payroll and payments across those regions, um, they very much look to other sources for uh, validation that you are the right company with which to do business with. And that's typically companies such as Gartner. And we have been recognised by Gartner in their market guys for multi-country payroll solutions now for the third year running. Um, and we're recognised there with up a billion dollar 
uh, organisations. It's quite a milestone for our business. So we're trusted. It's very sticky. And we also focus very much on the full integration of our solution suites across the enterprise. And the reason that it's sticky is because our clients work with us predominantly on ensuring that they have no reputational risk in a country or certainly any reputational risk with their clients or their employees as they look to grow themselves. Our, our growth focus has been definitely with a great organic sales team, but also we do have an emerging partnership program. And to see that 15x growth since IPO is testament to terrific organic sales team, great global partnership, and also a customer base that has a growth mentality as well. Everybody is deeply investing in, into Asia Pacific from our client base. So we are following our clients in many instances. We do give all of our organisations one view of their workforce across all countries that they allocate to us. And that's a distinct advantage. Many organisations don't have that visibility. And today it's all about culture. It's all about talent. But more importantly, it's also about compliance and regulatory abilities because you can't afford, for instance, in Indonesia or in Hong Kong or in Singapore to have a reputational risk around underpayment. And we've seen that in the Australian market quite significantly. So who are our customers? Um, firstly, no customer represents more than 4% of our ARR. So we don't have any client concentration whatsoever. And all of our clients are very much in growth mode. So despite a tough year in COVID-19, where it's impacted many of us and many of the organisations, we've seen a great level of strength in our ARR growth as people look to digitise further payroll, payments, and importantly, their HCM talent management suite. So organisations such as Appen, who many of you would know, came to us because they had a fast growing business unit in the Philippines and they weren't able to get a solution from their incumbent provider within a period of time that would satisfy their clients' contracts. So together with um, Kevin Levine, the CFO there at Appen, we've been able to develop a solution for Appen's Filipino organisation that was taken on and then further expanded back into Australia, Singapore, China and other locations that Appen have. So that's a typical case example of how we can grow with the customer with our timely, executable, deeply governed, well executed payroll solutions, fully integrated to their ERP. We've been dealing with Westpac now for over seven years in all of their non Australian locations. And you know that when you deal with financial services business, such as the ones that we've listed today, our ability to take care of data is paramount. And we continue to grow our verticals and payroll with our recent acquisition, which now takes us into franchise groups. So the three major employers in the world, corporates, workforce management companies, such as Michael Page and Hudson, and fast growing franchise groups are the segments that we're addressing. We'll continue to focus very at the core, our payroll solutions. So that's paying our clients employees in up to 41 countries and also doing the payroll payments and statutory lodgements in those countries for them. And I'm sure everybody would like to speak to us about, are we ready for the new COVID-19 workplace normal? Well, the answer is yes because the opportunity to speak to people face to face is limited these days with offsite working. So we've implemented our AI chatbot for that. If you are coming back into the office, 
we do have our solution set engaged with facial recognition and temperature checking controls. So door, door facilities can open as a result of that. But we're very much focused on delivering the core payroll function. Once we have that embedded, and once we have that payment structures going through, because we're deeply trusted down to lodging the payments on behalf of our clients, in many, many cases, holding their banking tokens, we then move to upsell them into new countries and our HCM modules, which you see listed there. So we are a logical partner for HCM once payroll, deeped by, underpinned by deep client understanding and relationships from pay is moved into HCM. To again increase the ARR for our group, since IPO, we've been very focused on growing our international partner program. So this augments our deeply experienced organic sales team. Today, we have contracts with these organisations to provide solutions for their customers in the Asia Pacific region where they have no exposure or no ability to execute. So typically, a client of CloudPay or iMedis, CloudPay based in the UK, iMedis based um, in Ireland, would want to, would needs requirements for Asia Pacific. We engage with CloudPay or iMedis to actually implement and complete that work. And then that information about pay is supplied to their client in Asia Pacific, but deeply, deeply integrated into the cloud pay technology. So their customer in the UK or wherever they may be can see the Asian data. Again, together with our partners, we're providing one view of your workforce globally. Ultimate Software in the US, absolutely fastest growing payroll and HCM company in the US is also our partner and works on a very similar basis. So that's all inbound deal flow for pay group from two major decision-making points, Europe and the US. And pay group does have team members based alongside of those organizations. In today's COVID world, of course, it's online, but based within those regions to further expand our knowledge of our solution set with their key account managers and sales organisations. So great high margin channel for us, definitely increased utilisation of our infrastructure and starting to contribute terrifically to our exit ARR of $27 million for this fiscal with $2 million contribution from our global partner program. And that is on the increase. The year that we just exit was clearly tough with COVID and we were all affected by that. However, our customer base and our sales organisation, as well as our prospects, absolutely saw that this is the real catalyst for digitisation. So our organisation was able to complete new contracts of at least $13 million in total contract value for the year. And you can see that that's an outstanding result versus the previous years that we've been listed. And the reason for that is our solution set is what's required and is what's needed and is required for our clients to assure themselves that they're governed with the right regulatory efforts in payroll. What we've moved on to there as a result of our great sales, our great client retention and our acquisitions is the ability to be announced to the market that our exit ARR for this fiscal, last fiscal is 27 million, remembering that we just exited at March 31. This is a major proof point for our, ourselves and also our investors of the successes that Pay Group has built and the $13 million of total contract value sold during the course of last year gives us the momentum going into this year for a, another great result. We are three-year contracts. 
So all of our customers are three-year contracts with automatic renewals. Group-wide, we're at 95% retention rate and it is all annuity style revenues, all repetitive revenue. So there's some levers here for all of us to think about. We'll continue to grow our core payroll solutions. That gives us the scale that we've shown, 15X since IPO, to ongoingly deliver trusted pay solutions to our customers, whether they be a franchise network, which are fast growing, whether they be a workforce management company who hire people and then contract them out, such as Michael Page, Bettison, Hudson, or they be our corporate organisations that you've saw, Appen, Fast Growing, or whether it be Orange, DuPont, we'll continue to focus our core abilities in that area. We'll unlock further value in our client base by cross-selling. Now this cross-selling could be for payment solutions to actually facilitate the pay reaching the employee or the various superannuation funds across those 40 countries, that's a growing area. It could be more countries as they look to expand or they look to bring in other vendors back onto our single view of the workforce or HCM modules. Our global partnership program is focused and has high attention from the board level. We know the best organisations globally because of our 25 year plus DNA in this industry and we'll continue to sign up new global partners to bring more deals into the Asia Pacific region for pay group to execute on. And that's a core focus for the business and contributing now to ARR from, from zero three years ago to $2 million and that will look to, definitely look to increase. We know that our current global partners, also their sales results like ours are at record levels. We'll be the benefactor of that. As we have over 6 million pay slips that we can look to monetize on an annual basis today, we will continue to provide payment solutions and high value initiatives such as on-demand pay, which is where an employee can access their wages that they've earned ahead of time. And that's clearly a wellness product that corporates in particular are looking to engage with as they retain terrific talent in their business. Something that we do specifically in the Australian market because we're allowed to from a regulatory and compliance perspective is offer alternative superannuation products to our clients' employees as they're onboarded. So we are doing that in Australia. We are doing that with our largest payslip base in Australia and that's been running now for about 11 months and giving great returns from monetizing our client's employee strategy further. So enhancing our payment solutions offering is something that's a core focus for us as well. And of course, as a result of the recent capital raise and hiring of global leaders from a product and technology perspective recently, will continue to focus on the automation, both at the implementation level, where we're implementing today in four to six weeks, through to the automation of our core payslip business so that we are bringing the best efficiencies internally to our business and needless to say, that improves our profitability. Underpinned all of this is a strong balance sheet that allows us to execute on this growth. So again, in snapshot, $27 million ARR, three year contracts, 95% retention rate in our client base. And with that mark, I'll certainly invite any questions that we have today, please. Okay, thanks for Thanks for that, Mark. I have got uh, kind of one or two that came in ahead of time for somebody who could, a bit like Rob's presentation, who couldn't join us, but is going to watch the recording back tomorrow while we 
wait for one or two to come through from the audience. And the first one was, how do you define an enterprise customer? Is that somebody, you know, coming to you once they get to like over 100 employees or over 500 employees? I think maybe the question they're getting at is, you know, when do when do customers, I guess, come into your sales funnel? Like when do they first kind of approach you or kind of what level of employees? We, um, we always try to take a position of command with our client base, um, Mark. And for instance, when SPAC arrived in Singapore as their first stepping stone of moving off outside of Australia, um, it was five employees. We have big global brands and emerging multinationals with one employee, two employees in our funnel and in our client base, because we naturally know that they will invest and grow. And that's exactly what happened with Westpac, five people in, in Singapore to begin the journey with, and now they're in seven countries with over 600 people just in the Asia Pacific region and consistently growing. So that is a, a typical uh, target of ours to say yes to whether they're one person or yes, obviously, if it's 10,000 people. Core differentiator between ourselves and our competitors is our ability to scale up and down. And a core differentiator between ourselves and our competitors is that we do obviously corporate solutions, enterprise, but also manpower workforce management companies such as um, Hudson, Bettison, Michael Page. Big differential group, um, big differentiators for our group. And then um, another thing I think uh, I've heard you mention on a, I'll just put it in myself, is um, you've mentioned on another call is the, the benefits of COVID was, I think, companies realizing uh, the gaps maybe in their payroll system when you've got all these government programs that are starting up, you know, very short notice that now need to be integrated into internal systems and 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 people's pay slips and um, maybe just give it a, a quick overview of, of i guess how you managed all of that over the last year and you know i guess how it solidified your offering if you think about job keeper in australia um when job keeper was announced 85 percent of our client base joined on um, zoom calls for education with two days notice. The thirst for knowledge and the thirst to assure um, that you're compliant for pay um, was only exacerbated as a result of all the government schemes that happened uh, across uh, Asia Pacific. And this obviously had impacts as well too from um, particularly the UK where like JobKeeper furlough arrangements were put into place and global payroll and HCM leaders were looking to assure themselves across the globe that they were absolutely regulatory compliant and the changes that were happening were affected by their payroll um, SaaS providers or their payroll service providers. Um, it showed decision makers that in many areas of their business, they were underqualified, under-resourced and certainly not compliant. And as a result of that, we were able to execute um, our sales organisation into those opportunities and sign those $13 million at a minimum TCV for last fiscal. So it did provide us great selling opportunity and the eyes have wide opened in prospect and client basis into areas that they necessarily weren't as focused on um, before. Clear, clear example is in payroll, expense management. Many organisations were still paper based. You can't take paper into an office anymore. So the uptake of our expense management module in our client base and automating that was a clear upsell. Okay, great. Uh, I'm just going to see if we got any questions for the audience. But in the meantime, Mark, do you just want to just go back to that final slide that has your contact deal or sorry contact details on it and we just leave that up for a second um, i know we were talking offline yesterday um but maybe can you just 
let people know that you have some analyst coverage now. Uh, it might be instructive of where people can go to get that uh, if, if they want to read through it and who are the covering brokers currently. Thanks, Mark. So at paygrouplimited.com, um, you will see um, two independent analyst reports. We're very fortunate for a company of our size today to have such reports. Um, one is from an Asian um, firm called Spark, who uh, are updating their report, but their existing reports there today. And obviously, we've got coverage from Canada Court. Um, ben Skend is the analyst there, and that's there as well too. So two independent reports um, on our business, uh, and obviously with showing the great potential and growth rate uh, of our company. Okay, great. Um, we've got one question in from the audience here. Um, what, uh, it might be a bit tricky to answer, but um, you know, where do you see, I guess, annual revenues in, in, in the next two to three years? Are, are you confident you know, some kind of similar growth rates can be maintained, you know, with notwithstanding what you just said about COVID, about, you know, the, the, the uh, I guess, people's minds have been opened up to different ways of doing things and highlighting the gaps that they have in their own internal systems. Absolutely. Um, great question. So, you know, our last quarter saw $4.8 million of total contract value signed. And obviously not all of that gets implemented in the last quarter. So you'll see um, the thematic of our TCV signed um, move through into ARR as we um, grow in subsequent years. Our sales funnel, um, highly rated sales funnel, where um, I run um, sales meetings uh, across, the, across our groups on an every two week basis. Um, we're seeing um, our funnel as being as best as I've ever seen in my 20 plus years history in this um, industry, Mark. So all leading indicators, um, our TCV sales, our client growth, entering new markets of workforce management and franchise. And also a key part of what we've done is tuck in outstanding organizations through acquisitions. Um, those, those three areas of Client wanting to, clients wanting to invest into Asia, coming out of Europe, coming out of the US, um, digitization, and other organizations wanting to be a part of the pay group journey um, are all areas why we'll continue to, to grow our ARR. Okay, great. We, uh, I know we started a minute or two late with you, Mark, and we are pushing up uh, on the hour. So I think if we don't have another question from the audience, I'll give it a minute. No, I, I think we will leave it there because we're just coming up on 10 a.m. Sydney time now. Um, Mark, thank you very much for coming back in and uh, giving us an update on everything uh, pay group. Uh, we really appreciate it. And as I said, the recording will be up on the Coffee Microcaps YouTube channel tomorrow morning if anybody, uh, you know, skip, if we skipped over a slide a bit too quickly. Uh, and with that, I'll wish everybody a good rest of their Thursday.